Hello good people and welcome to another YouTube video here on the channel and finally, finally, after several weeks of having to wait for this, I'm able to sit down and play Mana Lords, a game that I've been waiting for years to get my hands on. I'm so thrilled that it is finally out. Thank you so much to Hooded Horse, the uh, publishing house, who have uh, very kindly given me a key for this and have also very kindly allowed me to... Um, kind of sit on the key for a few weeks whilst I uh, got married and went on mini moon and all that kind of jazz. But all that's now out of the way. Content now should start flowing back into the channel. I've got some big announcements coming up with various bits and pieces going on, charity events and bits and pieces. Uh, so make sure you like, comment and subscribe to the video, to the channel. And of course, join the Discord. The link is in the description below uh, where you'll get all the updates as to what is going on. Right, well... Let us uh, let us get going then. Um, I ge genuinely am so excited to play this. So here comes the f the fun bit though: is creating our character. Now I do know that from the early access point of view, there's going to be things that aren't finished. There's going to be bugs that we're going to run into, no doubt. Um, and one of the things that uh, you will notice is that whatever portrait we choose here makes no difference to the character that you can run around your village in. So even though this guy, who Whilst his moustache looks nice, the rest of his outfit is rather unpractical, I think it's fair to say. He's chainmailed to the max. Sir Sweaterlot, I think we'll probably call him. Um, this guy... He looks, he, looks kind of, he looks kind of cool. This guy looks about 12. I suppose in those days they did have young lords, didn't they? Uh, I think we're going to choose this guy, you know? I think we're going to go with him. Um, now, interestingly, while I was away on my mini moon, I did actually stumble across a a company. I can't remember the Hall of Names, I think they were called, where you can investigate your family's name. And I investigated my family name, and we had a crest. Um, and it's annoying that I don't have the piece of paper with me that I printed out for my dad's birthday as a present. Um, but I was going to try and somewhat emulate that, but I can't. So I don't know where it is. I think it's uh, I think it's upstairs somewhere in the cupboard. Um, so yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to just create one from scratch, but it turns out that my family was convicts. <laughs> they spent uh, a large part of their time, they were hunters with uh, archers and stuff like that. And, um, they spent a lot of their time in Australia as convicts because they kept hunting swans, which of course are under royal protection. So, <laughs> so yes, that's, uh, that's the history of my family. Right. Um, I think we're going to have, should we have something like that? Should we have a cross or do we just keep it straight up simple? Just looking at all the different designs. You could, there's limitless possibilities here. It's just tweaking around and finding out which ones kind of uh, work best. I think this one might be a winner, actually. That looks kind of cool. Just having it like that instead. So having more of a pattern on the bottom and the design work at the top. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. Is that the right symbol? Is that what we're going to go for? Or do we want to find... I do like the idea of having some kind of animal on the top. Could have a dragon. I did spend my mini moon in Wales. Um, I do kind of like that one. I'm not going to lie. Okay, I think we're going to go for that one. And then it's just a case of whether I'm happy enough with... Yeah, see, that looks good. I do like that. Okay, I think that's what we're going to go with. I'm happy with uh, happy with the choices there. So, game set up then. What have we got here? We've got scenario templates. Premise um, of Rise to Prosperity is to fulfill the requirements of your citizens' plan and rule your medieval town as you see fit without worrying about combat. Okay, now we want, we want a bit of everything, don't we? Um, two territories in the north are claimed by illegitimate baron whose castle is located off the map. Bandit camps reside in the other unclaimed regions. Victory conditions is to conquer every single region. Could go to that one. Uh, 
Well, maybe go, we go restoring the peace, you know. Uh, AI opponents is obviously currently off. Radio frequency medium. No more than a single raid every two years. Okay, that should be... I don't know how quick the years go, so it's... Uh, two years before we start. Okay, initial banning camps one. Random banning camps spawn limit three. Yes. A free weapon delivery for militia as soon as player builds a storehouse on five residential plots. I mean, that's very nice of you. Okay, I think we're uh, I think we're good. Let's uh, let's roll with that, shall we? And here we are, a little home away from home. My my my, isn't it pretty? A new message. Victory condition is dominance. Build up your town, your manor, and when ready, press claims towards regions owned by your opponents. Once a claim has been pressed, be ready for battle. I'll unite these lands under my rule. Okay. In manor lords, families need food and fuel and a roof above their heads to survive. Supplies in the region panel often show how much... Uh, sorry. Supplies in the region panel above shows how much you have got left. I will leave those on the little tutorial here. So I do kind of remember... I do kind of remember bits of it from previous times, um, but not everything. Can we change the name of our, uh, I don't like, Nuslo, I don't like that. After you reach the next settlement level, you'll be granted a development point to spend. Unlock development branches to make your region more efficient. To enact policies, you need to raise your administration, administration level by building administrative buildings like the manor. Okay. So we can like focus in this area, which is uh, looks like sort of naturist. Over here is financial. Above looks maybe farming of some description, and below is maybe production. Okay. Right. What shall we name our region? Three weeks later. I am going to name this for anybody who is a fan of the Last Kingdom. Will know the relevance to this one. It will be called Bebenberg. And my manor will be my uh, manor lord will be called Utrid. Did I actually name him? I don't think I actually named this guy. I don't know if it was possible, I can't remember. <laughs> but he will be known as Utrid, even if it's not his actual name on paper. Uh right, let's just pause for a second and just take a quick look around then. So we've got five unassigned families. Um, living space is zero. We've got ten population, five level one families with. I'm assuming that's is that eight male and two female. Is that what the suggestion is there, or is that eight adults and two children? Can't see any children around. Let me see male and female adults. <sighs> okay, we've got 50% approval, 100% public order, 50 regional wealth. So that's how much money we have right now. Um, one oxen livestock. And here is our supplies. So every burgage plot consumes one food and one fuel per month. Fuel consumption in the winter is doubled. Additionally, some workplaces consume a fuel per month as well. We have uh, food stored for four months. Which I assume is that there. So we have currently got 20 bread. Uh, we've got 20 stone. We have some timber cut up there. We have 10 tools somewhere. We've also got some big old timber there. And where's, where's the tools at then? Okay, they're, they're obviously they're somewhere. Look at, look at all of these other things you can have here. Look, so different types of construction parts here. We've got roof tiles, blocks. There is, what's that? Seven different types of food. Two different types of fuel. There is f six different types of crops. Look at all those crafting materials. What's that? A dozen, maybe more? Different commodities. And then obviously you've got all the military stuff there as well. So yeah, we've got a lot... To build and a lot to do. So, let us uh, begin. Um, so first of all, let's just take a quick look at our overall map. So if we zoom out here enough. 
Um, so we've got some wild berries over there. We've got wild animals over here. We've got clay deposit and a stone deposit. And we've got an iron deposit. So we are a little bit away from the wild animals, which is a little bit annoying because that's going to be a bit of a trek for them. Um, but the path, the pathing. Okay, so that's the main road through. Fine. So let's create. First of all, let's create ourselves a little link. Like that. Going to try and create a lot of... Free, the whole game allows you to build in a almost freehand type way. So I'm going to try and do that. I'm going to try and not be so rigid. I'm not playing city skylines or something like that. So I'm going to try and be a bit more freehand with this. With the building and where I place things. And hopefully as a result it's going to look really, really nice once it's all done. You know, the cities of all the villages and hamlets and towns of, of medieval times were not built for efficiency. Particularly they were just built for convenience I suppose more than anything. So, uh, what do we want first? Every region of Lord has strengths and weaknesses. Be sure to check all the resource deposits as well as the soil fertility before deciding on the direction of your town. If your region has weak fertility, consider setting up trade early. Okay, that's... So, under... I've got plenty of water. Over there, quite close. That's good. So, these are the different types of crops, are they, I presume? Flax, barley, rye. Okay. That is... Okay, that's okay. Emma, I think, is wheat, isn't it? So, the 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 the, uh, the soil around here is pretty reasonable for, for growing, which is good. Okay. So, we shouldn't have to worry about trade too much, but what we are going to have to worry about is getting more people in, because five families, I don't think is going to get us very far. Uh, first of all, um, I think we are going to need a logging camp. I think that's probably the first thing we're going to need. Because I anticipate... Oh, that's the uh, wrong button. Um, I just anticipate us needing a lot of of timber. So we're going to build that over there. So it's an unassigned families work on it straight away. So any of the unassigned families will work on construction. Timber requires the oxen to be moved. Villages will automatically get the ox we need. Right, let's begin and move time forward. And what will we need other than that? So firewood. I mean, we're in the spring at the moment, so we don't necessarily need to worry about Woodcutter's Lodge right this very second, but we are. We do need to be careful that we don't... Uh, um, we don't run out of uh, time to do that ahead of the winter when it all gets a bit cold. Now, just remind me, where was the berries and stuff? So we've got berries right close, so that's good. Let's get some... Um, have that. Berries are just on the edge of the forest there. And build that. Like that, there we go. Again, I'm going to be real freehand with this. We'll see how this all goes. And then, of course, we are going to need to build some houses. Some, uh, is it Bur is it Burgage? Burridge? Is the G silent? I'm not sure. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, we could just call them houses. We'll call them house plots. So, provides living space for any single family or two families when expanded. So, at the moment, we are going to need five properties for this we're gonna wait until we get things off and running so everybody is contributing to the build as we see the building the buildings go up in a really cool way for those of you that are new to the channel i will say this and if you have been a fan of the channel for a little while and pl see me play any of these other city builders it, type games as the uh, the ox brings another wood log along I love to see things happening, right? I don't like to see just things standing still and, and, and nothing really happening. I think it's a, it, it's, it's, it's such a big thing for these sorts of games. You have to be immersed in what's going on. You have to feel like the city or the village or whatever is alive. So, yeah, that's that's kind of why I... When I see this sort of thing happening, I get all, uh, all excited. Okay. So there we go. So let's... We'll assign one family to work there.
While a human workforce has to be assigned by default, livestock workforce is shared between workplaces. That's fine. However, you can bind it to workplace permanently in the advanced tab. Uh, the other thing I would like to get set up straight away is... Is it a granary? What's the difference between a granary and a storehouse, I wonder? I don't, I don't, what I don't want is um, the food out here, the bread. The bread will get wet, food will get spoiled if it's outside and it starts to rain. So having something indoors is quite a, quite an important thing. Right, so he's, he's off to work. As our humble beginnings of Bebenberg begin to come together. A new message. I have heard of your renown. I only seek to defend my rights and my honor against those who would wrong me. I hope you will not judge me by the rumors and slanders that some may spread about me. Signed and sealed by my own seal, Hildebolt van Borenroot. Right back. You have no rightful claim to celibates and Hofstetten. I'm not sure we want to be making enemies just yet. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll leave him alone. Where, where actually is he? Uh, that's not what I meant. I think he's over here, isn't he? He's this one over here. He's in... What's that say? Holfstetten and Solbitz. Or is he both of them? He might be both of them, you know. Dear Outlaws, it's a pleasure. Let's, let's, let's make friends with the Outlaws. Letter sent. There we go. Let's, let's try and make some friends. Where are you going with that? Are you not supposed to be taking the logs away? Or do all logs just now get stored there? <laughs> it's, it walked the log there, then picked it up and brought it back. Right, forager's hut. Okay, that is off and running. Get one family in there for that. How many logs do you need for this one? We need 10 stone as well. How much stone have we got? Is that going to use all of our stone? Okay, it is. That's worrying. Um, do we have stone nearby? Stone deposit is there. How much stone do we actually need? For some of the, so let's have a look at some of the other buildings, for example. Maybe maybe a storehouse would have been better rather than a granary at this point. Um, but we'll get a, we'll get a storehouse in as well. Put that there. Uh, right. So these are just that's timber. That's timber. Wooden church. That's fine. That's a bit later on, and that also needs planks by the look of it. That's just timber. Timber. Hunting cap needs nothing, apparently. That's all timber. So actually, I don't think stone is quite as important right now. Farmhouse timber. <laughs> so it's all just timber. So stone is actually... It's only when we get probably here. Is this... Yeah, so the clay furnace needs stone. Even then, actually, very few buildings appear to need stone. This is good. This is, uh, this is good. Family requests a market area. Okay, um, where is, how do we get a market area then? That's fine, residential, is it in here? We can get a well in, can't we? I 
do kind of like having connections though. That is a little uh, weirdness of mine. Uh, right, where's the, where is the market then? Saw Pit Forest's hat. Logging camp, woodcutter's lodge. Trade? Trading post. Livestock trading post. Marketplace. Here we go. Uh, some buildings have flexible water space. Four points to designated an area. Yep, that's fine. I remember. I remember that. A well-supplied marketplace is the lifeblood of your town. Assigned families will set up stalls automatically as long as there's enough space on the market. Who hover Hoover <laughs> hover over specific categories to check your current supply and demand. Burgage plots closest to the market will get market requirements fulfilled first. Right, okay. So now so we've got the kind of the basis. We've got food, we have logs, and we have uh I'm gonna put somebody assigned to that. Let's try and get that bread moved in as soon as we can. So we've now only got two unassigned. We have now got some some people doing stuff. All right, bossy. What's his name? Oh, dear. <laughs> what an unfortunate name. All right, so that's a food stall. So who works it then? Because there's no... Oh, is it? Oh, the people working at the uh, forager hut do. Oh, I see. I see, I see, I see. Okay. Oh, look at that. They're putting all the bread onto the... Uh... Oh, my God. That's... See, I... <sighs> I love it. I absolutely love that. You're going to feel the passion and the excitement and the love from me on this. I'm telling you now. You will you will feel it. So, I did build the right thing anyway, because actually it says there, look, exposed goods pantry. Goods stored here are vulnerable to weather damage and needs to be moved to a granary. So, we are slowly doing what's needed by moving those in um and we've got a storehouse that's currently being constructed which can everything can be moved into there as well it's almost done anyway it's got all the uh, all the necessary bits now so how do we attract more families then that's the big question uh we have got how many we've got four timber Not enough goods. How big do these plots need to be? Okay, we'll do that. Get the first get the first two in there. And there is our storehouse. So we will put a, we will put a family in there. It's only going to leave one assigned family now for construction, which is a slight concern. Already, we've got the the necessities in and sorted. So you can see, look, food stored down there. That's your berries. Uh, how much food have we got? Seven berries, nineteen bread. So it said, was it one food? Per house, I think it said. So that means we should have food. We've got food for five months. Yeah, because we've got... I mean, if I have five families, we've got 20, well, 26, but 25 um, food, effectively, if you round down. Okay, we can move all of those things out of the way and get them hidden away. Okay, and now the well is completed. Nobody needs to uh, man that, which is good. However, we only have one family doing that. So what we could do is once all of the supplies have moved, is actually to take people off of the granary. So who's who's actually? Uh, oh, we've got two. Have we got two stools there?
Oh, a firewood store, yeah. The firewood store is going behind it. So we've got the people who work in the forage huts are doing that. We don't know who's doing that yet because it's not finished. If they can get that finished off. Come on, Agnes. Right, there we go. So who's doing that? Hans and Agnes, are you from the storehouse? Yes, you are. Okay. It's very cool that the families work on certain things. You haven't got to sign like an individual worker, so it's like an entire family would work it. I don't know if a family is only ever going to consist of two people or whether, you know, as they, if they have children. I don't know. I, again, I'm assuming that they do will have children at some point. Um whether those children then grow up and as part of the family, whether they then, you know, go and help out in the same place and make it more efficient, perhaps. But yeah, irritating at the moment. I mean, we technically don't need transporting stone. Where are you? Oh, you're taking the stone from there. I'm taking it over there. That's fine. So these will be the uh, plots that go up. Uh, we, we've got another four timber, so we could build another... another two houses around there and then once we build the fifth plot we should be good to go but this part is going to take a little while isn't it so I'm thinking may maybe we um, just skip along a little bit there's probably gonna be some some cutting along the way here otherwise there's gonna be a lot of waiting around for things to happen um, but I'm just gonna take a should we take a say what let's say take a little little moment and uh, have a little wander around, shall we? So there's our well. The very fact that you can do this as a feature is just so, so cool. I really hope that this gets expanded upon. Uh, what's this socialising? There's work to be done. Thank you. Yeah, I really hope they flesh out this feature. It'd be so cool if like you could actually chip in and actually help. So if, if things need to be moved a bit quick, quick, I'm not suggesting you can like, jump in and start building. I mean, maybe. But, you know, just being able to sort of help out a little bit would be kind of cool. Although, I suppose, if we're keeping to the law and everything and the historical accuracy, I don't know how much a Manor Lord would have chipped in doing the grunt work, if you like. Very, very cool. Why is the woodcutter going all the way? Hang on, no, it was the forager. I saw people wandering off over here, didn't I? So, Kunz and is that a, is that a name that would have, was used in the old days? I mean, it probably even even if it was, it probably didn't have the same meaning back then that it does now. Right, we are struggling a little bit, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the honest, take the families off of those for the moment. Let's get them working on construction, because otherwise this is going to take forever. Tell you what, let's go against my uh, better judgement and let's speed things along. I wanted to just kind of watch and watch it all come to life, but actually, realistically, I think we have to speed this along, otherwise this is going to be an insanely long time before uh, anything is actually completed. Is there a reason that these uh, unassigned families are not doing anything? What are they, what are they waiting for? We are going to need firewood after this as well, aren't we? Why is nobody building anything? It's worth noting as well that this spring season is lasting quite a long time because so we're still in April. So the whole thing about the outlaws not attacking, like, is it two years I've got before anybody attacks? Gives me a little bit of, uh, of lee leeway. Right, 
constructing. So they were just having a break. It was obviously, it was night time. It was chill out time. So they've now come to uh, actually build the house. Here we go then. So our first houses are going up. And with more families working on them, this should all go up a little bit quicker now. Again, let's be things along. Is that it? Is that... <laughs> they build a little bit and they're like, right, that's enough. That's enough work for one day. Oh, they may have run out of uh, wood actually for that. They needed the second wood. Just in time as the weather comes. So that was good, right? So we've got we've managed to get all of the uh, the food and the storage and get it into the storehouse and the granary. Now one little detail here. Look at how everything looks like it's sodding wet now. Look, the wood is getting wet. There are puddles forming on the roads that we that we have built. They're not predetermined. Those roads were not predetermined. I built those and told them where to go. And here we go. Homeless will move into the plot, and if approval is high enough, it might attract new families too. However, families need more than just the space to be happy. Click on the building to check their residential requirements. So they've got that. They don't have any church. Food. Clothing and fuel is what they will need. Construct. Oh yeah, so you can create cr uh, construct a backyard extension here. So you can actually tell them to make... I don't... I don't know whether this is just food for the individual house or whether this goes into the sort of the uh, the ability. Can they then sell it on afterwards? I have to maybe look that up. Um, so that's the woodcutter's house, effectively. Family members join one of the settlers. Burgess block level one. What does that mean? Oh. So we've got we've got another person. So people actually oh I see. So people join the family. Oh, that's because we've got a. S oh, Are they, is that because they just had a son? And he's he's grown up awfully quickly. She's inside. I love the way they look a bit different as well. And look, yep. Is that, have they both got a son called Jacob? Oh no, he's a husband. So much quicker to get all these uh, things up. And the differences in the houses as well. I mean, there's, there's subtle differences, but look. You can see the difference in the back of the house with the... Uh, I'm sure that's like an outhouse. Um, very, very cool. And even this one, look, completely different colours as well. Like, just, I love the variety. It just gives it so much character and everything. So when this becomes a much bigger town... Yeah. Really, really cool. Uh, so, yeah, so they've got a new family member. Have they got somebody new yet? Not yet. Okay, the uh, downside is, is that obviously this is going to cost us extra um, food, but we have got enough food now for 10 months. We've got lots of berries, which is great. Uh, Fuel-wise, we've got enough fuel for six months. But I'm assuming that's because we would, oh, we're going to have to build a, uh, a, fi a firewood hut, or whatever it is it's called. What was it called? Um... Woodcutter's Lodge? Is that one? Yeah, Woodcutter's Lodge. There we go. Okay. So everybody then. Oh, we've got, no, we've got one more. We've got one more house to build. Should we build it on the... Uh, build it on the inside there. So once everybody does that, where is our ox currently? Oh, he's over there. Transporting water. Where did he take the water to, I wonder? I oh, know he's transporting timber. He's transporting water. So is he taking it to his house, is he? 
Not entirely sure. But once we get this other house built... There we go. Our settlement level has increased. Resources we've added in... What was that? 20 what is that we just added? Oh, that's the... Uh, okay, the shields and spears. So we can get a retinue if we want to. Okay. To get more population, you need to have enough empty burger spots and your approval needs to be over 50%. So that's how you attract more people. A strong militia is a paramount to the survival of, of any settlement. Luckily, a shipment of weapons has just arrived and you'll now be able to create your first military, sorry, militia banners to serve you and protect your people. However, we will need to get more weapons to equip all of the people as the settlement grows, either by making them or importing them from other lands. Okay. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So that's, uh, that is a good start. So what it's saying is, is that we actually need to build... We've got, we've got loads of timber, haven't we? Is to build more plots. So if we build more plots like this... And as the empty... Uh, we have more we should have lots of more people as well right because we've got the unassigned families now have got all an extra sorry the assigned people who've got burger spots who've got houses have all got an extra person now so that should mean we've got five extra people in each in the across these things we have we can see 15 which means we've got three extra people who are currently in the unassigned families so that's three more people to do uh to do building this lady here is just building it all on her own Right, okay, so that's that. So what do we realistically need next? Um, we need to get maybe some farming. Maybe we need to think about some farming at some point. How do we get rid of this? Uh, okay, it only comes up when we do that. That's fine. Um, got all that hitching post, okay. Industry. Do what do we want to do here? Don't think we have a huge amount here, but I think we should probably think about food. Or maybe do we do a forester hut? Because yeah, the, uh, <laughs> the maybe we need to think about maybe planting some trees. Right, speed things along with these empty houses that we're building. Where is, why is the ox picking up logs from all the way over there? Why does it just go over here where the logging camp is? Because there's tons. Would it help him if I did this? Okay, so here we go. Have we got another family living here? Living space is, is six. Families at the moment is only five. Keep going, Mr. Ox. Keeps going off into the woods to collect the uh, the timber. Just go to the logging camp. It's closer. We've actually... The, um, the homeless shelter tent thing has disappeared. So I guess that only gets created or appears when there is actual homelessness. Right, okay. All materials are there, ready for the completion of these... Two houses, and then approval rating needs to stay at 50%. Homelessness should no longer be a problem. 51% market food variety. There we go. Right, so we now put someone back at the storehouse and put someone in, in at the granary. And hopefully now that should start satisfying food source supply. There we go. So we've got two types of food for there. Um... Just need a couple more families to, to now arrive. And we can think about getting them the the woodcutters lodge as well. Do 
do that as well. Uh, but yeah, I think we have effectively we've got the basics of our of our little village, of our little settlement now set up. Fuel is only at two months. We've got 15 months worth of, of food. Which is brilliant. We have so many berries. At some point we probably need to start thinking about Hunter's Lodge as well to get some deer meat and the, the hides that we can turn into clothing as well. But the woodcutters have done a pretty good job of clearing this forest, so we definitely need to get this forestry uh, hut, or forester's hut, sorry, built. Otherwise, we are going to run out of trees quite quickly. But yeah, absolutely loving this. It's just, I mean, just look how picturesque this looks. So I went to a museum in Wales while I was on my mini moon, and basically it had a... It's like a walk through time and they were actually taking these buildings that had been you know found in various places in wales in various states of disrepair and in, in use and stuff and they had deconstructed them all almost brick by brick in some cases and reconstructed them at this museum in in the uh, in the on the grounds of the museum so you could walk around houses that look like this and take a look inside them and sort of get a feel for what the conditions were like and how cramped it all was it's absolutely fascinating if you happen to be in wales i highly highly recommend it if you've got kids as well it's a great day out there's loads of play parks and things for them to do and, and see it's just it was amazing absolutely astonishing and and seeing these buildings and how they were constructed and how people lived is just fascinating it really really is and it's just so picturesque it's just so beautiful aren't they everything is so peaceful yeah what can you what can you say yeah, look, we can extend. We can, I think fields probably over here. Maybe that's what we looked at in episode two, or maybe down here, or that's on the main road. So I think I'd rather have the farms kind of up and over there. Right. I think that is where we will um, finish the episode. I think that's good. We've got a good start here. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. I hope you've had a great time watching this. We've got plenty more of this to come. So thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you all in the next episode.